Hey, welcome. Today's video is a video I'm kind of excited about doing, which is called Mastering Roth Conversions. This is gonna be a step-by-step -step guide to retire tax-free. And I'm gonna start off with the basics of a Roth conversion, and then reasons why you would, might do a Roth conversion, and then actually get into an example of why somebody might do a Roth conversion, kind of get into the details behind the math, just to give you a simplistic overview as to how this might benefit you or a loved one and give you an idea as to how to go about planning for a Roth conversion yourself, working with a financial advisor and or tax professional to help you along your journey. So let's get to it. First section is just understanding the basics of a Roth conversion. So you might be asking the question, what is a Roth and what is a Roth conversion? A Roth IRA is an instrument that the IRS allows us to invest in for retirement. And we elect to pay the taxes up front so that the money that's inside of this retirement account will continue to grow tax-free once you get to a retirement age, which is 59 and a half, that all the growth and all the money that you put away will come out tax-free to you. So you're kind of betting saying, well, maybe if I pay the taxes today, it will lower my tax bracket in the future. Or maybe if you're worried about where the tax brackets might go because of all the debt that the US government is in, saying that taxes probably can only go up from here if you're one of those people thinking about future taxes, it might be a wise tool. So what is a conversion? Well, maybe you haven't used a Roth IRA up to this point. You can say, I'd like to take my traditional IRA, or maybe you changed careers or changed jobs and you have a former 401k or retirement plan and would like to convert and say, I would like to pay the taxes on the money that I had deferred or part of that retirement account, convert part of it into a Roth and elect to pay the taxes. So really what that is, is we're just taking a normal retirement account and converting it, electing to pay the taxes so it can grow tax free. So when you get to retirement and or retirement age, you can withdraw that money and pay zero taxes. So what is the benefit of a Roth conversion? Benefit is the money, once you pay taxes on it, you don't have to pay taxes ever again on that money. You can pass that money to children and they don't have to pay taxes on it. So again, it's a useful tool saying, you know, in a tax heavy society, this is a tool that the government allows us to use where we can plan and have tax free money at our beck and call. So who is actually eligible for a Roth conversion? The reality is a few years ago they had made some changes to the tax law and everybody is actually eligible. It's just a matter of how much income do you have and does it make sense to actually convert some or all of it in any given year? So we'll answer those questions. So how do you know if a Roth conversion is right for you? That's going to be one of the biggest questions. And part of it comes down to what is your financial situation? What are you trying to achieve in your life and or children's lives and their children's lives, you know, grandchildren um, or anybody for that matter. So part of it is you have to know and understand what is your end game? Where are you trying to be? What do you want to do? And I get it. Some folks that are watching this video might be saying, I would just like to be able to retire, let alone you're talking about Roths and converting money and paying taxes. Again, part of this is just saying, would I want to create something more of a legacy? Would I would like to have the idea of having some tax free money for in the future? If you're thinking about that and that makes sense, chances are Roth conversions might be a fit. So what do you need to think about then? Well, you need to dive a little bit deeper. And what I mean by that is you have to understand 
that you would be electing to pay taxes in the year that you convert. You can convert 100% of, of an account or you can convert just a smaller amount or a partial amount. And really, it depends on your income. So if you are working and between you and your spouse, you're working and say your income is $100,000, whatever you convert in that given year gets added to that $100,000. And so you pay the tax rate at the 100,000 plus whatever you convert at that rate is what you're gonna pay taxes at. So part of it is understanding that there's a little bit more to it and figuring out should you convert, how much should you convert, and it really has a tax component that you need to be cognizant of. But simple math would say the more you convert and the earlier you convert, chances are, if you leave the money invested, that converting in a lump sum or doing it earlier in life would be to your benefit. What are your retirement goals? Some people, like I said, might be just saying, I hope I can retire someday. But if you've done some thoughtful planning up to this point, you know, it is, what do you want to do with your money? How do you want to live your life? And what type of income are you going to have? You know, are you going to be fully taxed and then have a, a tax question later on in life? And I'll get into that when I start showing some of the examples. How do we calculate the conversion amount? How much should we actually convert? And really that's different for every single person. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to an example right now. Okay, now on this example, what I'm drawing out for you is the tax brackets. If you have zero income, your tax bracket is 0%. And then any additional income that you receive, you jump up to the 10%. And then any additional money on top of that goes up to the 12, the 22, 24, and it continues on going upward. The tax brackets actually go all the way up to 37% for federal taxes. I'm not talking about state, just talking federal. All right. And then on the bottom line, what I'm showing is your age. And for this example, what I'm assuming is somebody is working and then at some point they retire. RMDs, they start at age 73 and go all the way to age 75, depending on the year that you were born. And then the last thing that I have illustrated on here is at some point you pass away. So. For most people up to this point, they've done traditional IRAs, traditional 401ks, and while they're working, their thought process is defer while I'm in the highest tax bracket. And in this case, I'm showing as wages go up, taxes went from the 22 and then eventually they jump into the 24% federal rate. But then upon retirement, say, I'll live off some savings, I'll live off some social security, I'm not gonna touch my 401k. And then usually there's a significant drop in taxes, but then once you hit required minimum distribution age, all of a sudden you're forced to take money out of your 401ks, IRAs, the traditional retirement accounts, and pay taxes on that money. And again, the older you are, the more that the government forces you to take out of your investment portfolio. The older you get, you see that all of a sudden you could be jumping into higher and higher tax brackets. Not only that, if your spouse passes away, traditionally, you'd say, I want all my money to go to my spouse, and it further complicates the tax scenario. Actually, your taxes probably go up during this scenario, saying that we're gonna owe more money because now, instead of married filing joint, it's a single tax filer, but you're still required to take out the same dollar amount. Now, the reason why it spikes upon death is there's the inheritance tax that many of you might have heard about but don't know how it fully works. Today's video is not gonna get into that, but you know, assuming 
taxes are going to be owed or whoever inherits the money will end up paying taxes and so thus why we show a spike saying somebody's going to pay taxes at the very end now the green line is saying what if we could start to levelize your taxes and say find that sweet spot of how much should we convert whether it's each and every year to say instead of paying zero taxes knowing that we're gonna pay it way more later why not elect to pay a little over that little window where it'd say from retirement until required minimum distributions and convert so that way we don't have a significant spike in taxes and in fact we could minimize or end up zeroing out your tax liability not only for you and your spouse but for future generations okay so what I'm gonna do is show you my screen this is just a sample that I have built into a planning software and this is someone that's in their 50s they've saved one and a half million and their assets the actual retirement accounts and things of that nature is just under 1.2 million dollars their real estate or home is half a million dollars generic example it could be you okay and when I run the scenarios based on how much income that they had been living on if things go really well they could have a significant amount of assets later on but if things go within the average upon death because of the tax consequence later on in life you can see that they could actually run out of money so I'm not here to talk about how to do the planning or fix the planning what I want to talk about is saying okay what are some options so just by doing a Roth conversion what you can see is the plan goes from about 50% probability to making it to a 70% probability and so anytime we can improve upon a plan again there's other things that in this example a client could be doing but I am just purely illustrating Roth conversion so so what I'm gonna do is just jump to where the taxes are right now so in this example as I had mentioned the client was working and as their wages go up they go from the 22% federal tax bracket and it jumps up and it shows a 28% federal tax bracket and then upon retiring you can see how their taxes drop down over a few years and then start to jump back up what we want to do is say how do I fill up some of this little area and take advantage of the low tax environment that we're going to be at some point in the future and by the way the 20% 28% income tax bracket is due to the fact that if our tax law doesn't get modified it's going to revert back to an old tax structure which is instead of the 22 24% it goes to 28% and so again here lies the opportunity saying well if I could convert and pay 22 or 24 that's still less than 28 so but again chances are taxes will change moving forward and so this is just a tool for us to determine whether or not should we do some conversions when we have a lower tax bracket as I had mentioned when we do a proposed plan the only difference is doing Roth conversions and we have the same income tax bracket early goes from 22 and then goes up to that 28 and then instead of seeing it drop down for a couple years we elect to pay taxes for the next few years at a 15 percent tax bracket and then what happens is you see that the taxes drop off significantly from what I had shown on the previous screen is just showing tax-free amount which is in the light blue you can see that as you convert the money and then it continues to grow and then whatever it grows to 
Either you can take out tax for yourself or pass it on to your heirs. In the original plan, it has tax deferred, continues to grow, which is why we have to continue to pay a high amount in taxes each and every year because of the required minimum distributions. We're just purely suggesting convert early in the plan and let it grow tax-free if we don't need the income for later on down the road. So how do you know how much should you convert? Really what it comes down to is you either need to know and understand taxes and how they work. So any additional income, any money that you convert gets added to your income already. And how does that affect it? And so normally what we do is we look at your income tax brackets and say, how much room is there to convert in the existing tax bracket? And should we fill that up? And so part of it is by looking at a plan and saying, here's where I'm headed and what can I do today to head that off? And should I do it quickly or spread it over a number of years? My philosophy has always been shorter is better, but you want to take advantage of those significant drops, like the example of retirement until you would have been forced to take money out. How can you convert? And in some cases, maybe even while you're still working. Because if taxes go up in the future, maybe right now presents that opportunity for you. So calculating it, if you don't understand taxes, you want to work with a financial professional that does. So that could be your accountant and talking to them and putting together a tax plan as to doing Roth conversions. But usually you work with a financial advisor that does a financial plan for you and can help identify some of these things and works in conjunction with your CPA and you. So when you identify how much you are going to convert, you have essentially two different options. Option one is when you convert amount of money from traditional retirement to Roth, pay in estimated taxes from a non-qualified account, which means an account that might be checking, savings, a non-qualified brokerage account, not from a retirement account. Statistically, or mathematically speaking, it makes the most sense and is the most efficient paying taxes from an outside source. However, it still mathematically can make sense if you withhold directly from the conversion itself, take out federal and state taxes directly when you're doing the Roth conversion, because sometimes if you do a substantial amount of money, people might say that would drain all of my checking and savings or um, brokerage account down to nothing. And so sometimes it doesn't make sense to take it from that pot and it makes more sense to take it from the, the retirement account itself. And so again, you might have to gross up how much are you actually converting to net the amount. But at the end of the day, even if you withhold the taxes directly from the retirement account itself, it still financially can make sense. So the next question might be, where can you do a Roth conversion? And today with technology, it's made it fairly simple. You can do a Roth conversion pretty much anywhere. The limitations might be if you do it at an employer retirement plan, sometimes they don't allow for it yet or might not allow for you to withhold the federal and state taxes that you want to withhold. But most major custodians nowadays offer that as a convenience factor. So what do you do and how do you do it really comes down to what custodian you're at and what they require. Some custodians allow you to do 100% of everything online. Others make you call and do it through an advisor. And then some make you fill out paperwork to fill out the dollar amount, the tax withholding and all that information and to what account are you going to take it to. Next steps after that are to monitor and rebalance your Roth IRA. Review your 
holdings on a regular basis, just as you would for any other account, and rebalance your portfolio as needed. And for that part, you might want to consider professional advice, professional help versus doing it yourself. But again, if you're comfortable doing that, kudos to you. The next step is considering future conversions and future tax obligations and how you might accomplish or tackle that. So again, working with a tax professional and or financial advisor, sometimes it would suggest making quarterly estimated payments if you're gonna to continue to do it or withholding directly when you're making the conversion itself or making one-time payments when you're doing a conversion depending on the year. So consider converting in stages. And what I mean by that is looking at what is an opportune time for you and doing your conversions and setting up a plan and micromanaging that plan from year to year depending on how everything else is going in your financial situation. Again, it would be best to seek professional advice from either a financial advisor and or CPA or both. So in conclusion, Roth conversions are for everybody. It's just a matter of what is going on in your financial situation to figure out if it is right for you and how much is right for you. The timing is everything. The amount is everything. Just understand that mathematically speaking, the longer you can have money working and growing for you in a Roth which is tax-free, the better off you could be later on down the road. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. For more educational videos, please mention in the comments what you would like to hear about. See you in the next one.